welcome to Massive Late Fee. And now your hosts, Mark and Carol. Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to Massive Late Fee. My name is Mark. With me as always is my girlfriend, Carol. How you doing, Carol? Hey, what's up? It is October 13th. Ooh. Oh, not Friday though. So. No, 1995. It is. And we are here coming at you, talking to you about the news of the week, talking to you about the TV shows of we the week. We watched a TV show this week. Talking to you about the pornography of the week. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, you'll see in the title what we're talking about. I'm sure, I'm sure most of you have seen or will see this. Showgirls. This thing. Yeah. That we saw here. Yeah, this I don't thing, know what to call it. This thing is a good... Is a good <laughs> Is a good epithet for it. But uh, first, news. The Million Man March. Are you familiar with the March of a Million Men? No. Why don't you tell me all about it? Black men marching to Washington to talk about racial equality. There you go. That's basically what it is. Louis Farrakhan is one of the organizers. And apparently, according to Carl Brown... Louis Farrakhan and Chavez, Benjamin Chavez Jr., the other organizer, aren't worthy leaders of this. There, there's some, you know, Louis Farrakhan obviously has some, some divisiveness when it comes to to him and his religious beliefs and and things like that. I mean, he he strikes me as an assalamu alaikum, uh, <laughs> you know, starting a a, a new nation kind right. of dude. And I get, and now here's the thing. I don't pretend to know much of anything at all about the Million Man March because I don't. <laughs> I'm not black. We are in a community here in Michigan that is, we have, obviously Michigan has a substantial black population, but we're here in a community in Michigan that does not have a substantial black population. Uh, I don't know a lot of black people. Uh, I don't know a lot of their struggles. I haven't talked to a lot of black people. There's no like mass communication tools or anything like that for me to connect with with black people to better understand their plight. Hmm. You know, like uh, there's just no way for me to know what's going on in the black community, really, unless I physically went down there and, you know, talked to them and, and picked their brain and everything. Uh, which I haven't done. So I don't really know exactly all the issues that they're, that they're marching about. I don't know what it is exactly they want, but that's... Uh, that... It didn't explain this <clears throat> in the article at all? I didn't read the whole article. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, Fair the article... The artic- on- honestly, the article was mostly criticizing Louis Farrakhan and Benjamin Chavez Jr. Huh. And, and it's written by a black man. Um, you know, like I said, Carl Brown. Mm -hmm. So I don't know there. The, the black community seems to be somewhat divided on them. So where are they marching from? All over. They're all getting together, uh, and march and going to Washington. Right. But where are they all getting together at to march to Washington? They're getting on buses all over the country. And they're all they're all traveling there. It's like a big migration from from they're not coming from one central location. They're all all over the country. They're congregating to it's really, Washington. Yeah, they're so con- it's not a literal march. No, no, no. They're not marching across the country. They're congregating to Washington and then marching a- around. Like, okay, like the uh, you know where where everyone does the the Lincoln Memorial yeah. and the the what do they call the reflecting pool. Mm-hmm. And stuff like that. So there, and then there's going to be some speeches and, and things like that. It's a, they're all getting together for a march and a demonstration, okay. basically to say, hey, you know, we're people, and the government would be like, eh, you know, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> wow. Well, that seems to be the attitude. I know, but yeah. So I, I, I don't know exactly what they're going for, and I think that's part of the problem. Part of the problem is the messaging of this. I don't think it's crystal clear. It's more of like, and it's all dudes. It's the million man march. So I think maybe women might feel a little left out of the whole thing. Maybe. I mean, as a woman, I would 
not assume that I was excluded just because it said Million Man March. I guess that's true. The, like, there's exclusionary language in pretty much every founding document of the country. Right. Yeah, the uh, the Constitution still applies. So I I used to... That was one thing that somebody changed my mind about. I, I would get... I don't know if I've told this story on our show before or not. I don't think so, but maybe. But I had a conversation with, with a girl, and I said... You know, oh, it's dumb. Like, she's like, because she would talk about how she felt excluded and, like, how words mattered and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, that's that's dumb. Like, you know, obviously it applies to everybody. And she was like, read the beginning of the Constitution Mm -hmm. or the Declaration of Independence, but replace every he with she and every him with her. So I did. And it was like, I mean, my eyes were completely opened. I was like, oh, this... This does not feel like it was written for me, you know, when, when read that way. Right. And it's weird that he and him are uni- are supposed to be universal. Yeah. But, but her and, you know. They are. And we're used to it as a culture, mm-hmm. which is why I understand what she's saying. And I, I guess a lot of people do feel that way. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that it's a bad thing to try to find more inclusive language. Right. But... I just, I guess I just rationalize in my mind that that's the way it is and I don't let myself feel excluded. Yeah, I but, can I mean, see that. I guess it's, you know, you got to deal with it however you deal with it, you know, that's well, just me. This this political correctness stuff, it's a whole new, like, thing, you know, it's a whole new thing coming up and mm-hmm. with people trying to be more politically correct, you like, know, in the like, 90s. Like, I know that, um, you know, a lot of women... Are trying to get more equality and stand up for females, mm-hmm. and that's great. But at the same time, I, I feel like maybe we're going a little too far sometimes. Like, I like it when a guy holds the door for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I don't mind being treated a little bit differently because I'm a woman. I don't want to be a man. I don't, right. I don't want to have to kill all the spiders. Like, I think there's supposed to be differences. We are different. Yeah, I agree. So I, I don't just, love spiders, but I kill all the spiders for us. Like I literally one time had a guy hold the door for me and then look like he was second guessing it and drop it. <laughs> Strapped it right in your head. Like, did somebody yell at you before? Wait, so, like, what happens? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing is like, I think it's okay for women to want to be paid the same amount of money as, as guys for the same work. Yeah. But also want guys to pick up a check or or to hold a door like i think that's okay well okay if we're asking if we actually receive the same amount of money not just asking for but if if we are receiving the same amount of money mm-hmm. if that ever happens pay equality then i think we should split the check yeah but right now men do make more money than women so why shouldn't they pick up the check see i'm more of a traditionalist so i don't i don't mind whether i i believe in equality as far as it comes to society so, like, you know, equal pay and equal opportunities and, and things like that for women. I think women should be treated, you know, equally in those areas. But I'm, as far as interpersonal relationships go, I'm more of a traditionalist. So I I don't mind, like, holding a door or paying for a check or, you know, whatever, putting mm-hmm. my coat down over a oh, puddle. <laughs> If you ever did that, that no, that's that's too far. Oh well, yeah, we wouldn't have to. Do that. But I've picked you up over puddles before, like I've you know, like lifted you over puddles before, like you know, did the little swing thing, like swing dancing. Okay, sure. <laughs> what does that mean? I don't recall that ever happening. But you know, it might have been one of those times when I was drunk. So I believe you. We uh, we watched the X Files. Yeah, it was weird. Not the best episode of the X Files I've ever seen. It's the first episode of uh, the show I've ever seen. This is really you've never watched the X Files, right? I've never watched the X Files. I'm aware of who Scolder and no Mulder and Scully are, but Scolder. That'd be a nice couple name. All right. <laughs> well, I watched the show not on a religious or regular basis but i've seen episodes of the show i'm aware of i'm aware of scolder and mully <laughs> Mulder and scully yeah it would be their their good like cute like relationship name sure i don't know what that means relationship name i don't get that but 
Well, honey, you know, people have called us like uh, Meryl. It's happened. What are you talking about? <laughs> Meryl? <laughs> yeah. Mark. Like like we're a Mark and Carol. Like we're a fucking southern uh, you know, trio or something? I Meryl. Guess. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Fuck you. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm trying to talk about combining our names. Why would anyone ever do that? I don't know, okay? It's stupid. Sorry, fuck. I have never heard of that as a thing. That sounds stupid. No one will ever do that. That is never going to be a popular thing. Well, fine. It doesn't have to be popular, but I think it's cool. Whatever. I, it's Whatever. Com- taking two people who are dating and combining their names together. To make like some weird bastard eyes, like like uh, like if two people went into a transporter on Star Trek and got crossed together <laughs> and made into some weird third entity. That would be kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. I'd see that episode. Would you? Would you see that episode? I would. All right. Well, anyway, I've watched the X Files, and there are better episodes. There are way better episodes. Well, than, then I kind of want to keep watching it because I kind of liked it, even though it wasn't like super great. DPO, the episode that just came out, because it's the initials of, I don't know, Darren Philip Oswald, I think was his name. Peter. Oh, whatever. Okay. Darren Peter Oswald. Played by some, oh, played by uh, Giovanni Rubisi, who you may remember from a few years ago. Uh, I think maybe, God, when was this show on? The show was not long, but maybe three, four, five years ago, uh, on a show called My Two Dads. Are you familiar with My Two Dads? I'm familiar with its existence. Greg Evigan and Paul Reiser. And then what's her name? Stacey Keenan, who's on Step by Step now. Yeah. She was on She was on that show. And Paul Reiser, obviously, was on Mad About You. But, yeah, Giovanni Rabisi was also on the show. He was one of the friends. And he's the main antagonist of this episode. And his friend, the other guest star, is... Um, he actually... I recognized him. Oh. Remember we watched the movie Bye Bye Love? Yes. He had a bit part in that where they go to the party and he's the the little kids there and he's like, do you got any Raffi? And he goes, reefer? Like he screams <laughs> over the music, reefer, and he goes, Raffi! <laughs> and uh, his name apparently is the opposite of what you want when you go to Las Vegas. Right. It's Jack Black instead of Black Jack. I wonder if that means he'll be unlucky. Because he's the opposite of Black Jack? Yeah. Everyone seems to lose at Black Jack. Maybe he'll be, maybe Jack Black will be lucky. Maybe. What a name. Do you think that's his real name? Jack Black. Who knows? They have to like come up with a completely original name when they sign on to the Screen Actors Guild. So it could yeah. be made up. Could be his, his screen name or whatever. Yeah. You, you no know two people can have the same name. It's so weird. That's why Michael J. Fox is professionally Michael J. Fox, even though like, because there's an, already a Michael Fox or whatever in the Screen Actors Guild. Right. It is weird. Like my name, I'm not going to give my last name over these these airwaves, but uh, m- like my name is a very common name. Yeah, it so is. So if I ever wanted to be in the Screen Actors Guild, I guarantee there's there's one of me. My my first and last name are very common, but my middle name is original. I mean, not original, but it's less common. So would you just go by your I middle name? Just go by my middle name. I would as be your first name, Lucretia. Okay, yeah, that would be me. Lucretia Smith. If I ever publish a book, it's going to be Lucretia. If I ever start a movie, it's going to be Lucretia. Okay. So. What if you're in a play? No, then I'll just use my regular name. What the fuck? Okay. <laughs> Why the distinction there? Well, because I mean, what kind of play are we talking about? Broadway. Oh, well, then no, then I'd be Lucretia. Okay. But I mean, if it's like, you know, community theater or something, then I'll just use my name because it doesn't matter. What if you start your own bake shop? Lucretia's Bakery. All right, I like there it. You go. <laughs> what if it's bait and tackle? I would never do that. <laughs> Lucretia's got worms. Oh uh, no. <laughs> Lucretia's way pretty too pretty of a name for bait and tackle. It is a pretty name, despite the fact that the woman that you're named after was a murderer. Yes. <laughs> or a murderess. Lucretia Borgia. Anyway, so like What's what's that one dude's name? Victor Borgia? Who is the he's the pretended to be drunk and played the piano? I can't think of his name. I have no idea what you're talking he's about. The, it's, it's, a, it's one of those things that makes me a grandpa. 
He's from like the 50s or the 60s or whatever. He would pretend that he was a comedian and he pretended he was drunk. That was his big thing. I like, you know, but he pretended he's a good piano player and he played the piano. It's this whole thing. I think it was Victor Borgia, I believe. Okay. Anyway, back to this episode, this forgettable episode of The (laughs) X-Files. So some of these episodes connect to like a greater storyline. You know, when we're talking about like the cigarette smoking man. Or things like that. There are, yeah, see, she's looking at me like she has no fucking clue. Because you don't watch the show. You you would like The X-Files. I, I, you should I think watch I agree, it. because if that was like a bad episode, I, I liked it okay. It was not one of the better episodes. But they, the, so some tie into like the greater mystery, right? Mm-hmm. And then there's episodes like this that are just standalone, just like Monster of the Week type episodes. And that's what this is, is Giovanni Ribisi is the, a Monster of the Week. Where the the basic story, it's kind of a it's sort of a mystery and sort of not a mystery because we we see right at the beginning who the villain is, but th- it, like the basic story is very simple. Somehow this guy got struck by lightning, and it gave him lightning powers. Uh, it's so stupid. That's so stupid. I mean, I, know. I, I like supernatural stuff. I like monsters and things, but mm-hmm. that's not a normal monster. No, 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 no. No, but they, they do. They try to do some science fiction-y type stuff on this, too. There's supernatural episodes, and there's episodes that are episodes that are like horror, and there's episodes where they try to do like science fiction-y type stuff, and this is a little more science fiction-y. Like, this is something that happened gone wrong. If he had been part of a test... Like, that would have been made a little more sense, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, nobody gets struck by lightning and lives, right? No, people get struck by lightning and live. Really? Yes. That's weird. People die, too. That's more probably more common to die, but people do live getting struck by lightning sometimes. Ooh. I wonder what happens to them for real. What do you mean, for real? Well, I mean, we know what happened to him. <laughs> But no, that's that what happens. Pretend. They become they. If you live from a lightning strike, you become <laughs> a lightning <Right>. <laughs> monster <laughs> with the ability to some to like control Summon electricity. Lightning, yeah. That's that's the weird thing. Is like he's able to control electricity somehow. Like he's able to turn off lights mm-hmm. with his mind. Make the jukebox play yeah. the song he wants. Yeah, the, the specific song he wants somehow. I don't understand that. And he was able to make the radio, that dude's radio, yeah. play the song, which doesn't make any no sense. No sense at all, because it has nothing to do with electricity. No. And the jukebox and the radio don't talk to each other. Oh. See, that's why I'm saying it's supernatural. There's more there than just electricity. I guess. I don't know. But he's able to fucking fry the guy's heart. So, yeah. like, the beginning of the episode, he 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 wants to play virtual. He's playing Virtua Fighter. And this dude came and stole his Virtua Fighter game. So, because they're at an arcade. So he kills him, you know, as you do when someone steals your arcade game. And then somehow, they don't really explain how, but somehow uh, Fox Mulder and Dana Scully get involved in this. His first name's Fox? Yeah. What kind of name is this? Fox Mulder? Well, it's also on Fox, so... Maybe that's why I don't know. Well, that's just gross. I don't think they did. I think that was. I think that was predated the where they found out where they were going to go. What Fox. show they were going to go to? Fox Mulder. It's like naming your kid Apple. What? <laughs> why? <laughs> How is that name like naming your kid Apple? Because it's just like a random thing that's not a name. Fox. Brick. Okay, isn't it more like naming your kid Wolf though? Okay, but I don't know anyone named Wolf either. Well, I don't know. I don't know anyone named Apple or Brick. <laughs> Are you saying you know apples? No. Fiona Apple. Well, if she yeah, named last name. if she named her daughter Apple, it'd be weird. Apple Apple. Mm-hmm. I think she'd be a one name person then. Just Apple. Just Apple. I would do that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if their last name is going to be Apple anyway. Ooh, or you name them green or red. Oh, my God. Or golden delicious. <laughs> right? Golden middle name delicious. Golden D Apple. <laughs> wow. Anyway, so 
we keep sidetracking from this episode because there's not much to talk <laughs> about, really. He becomes a lightning monster and kills people. Yeah. He, he's a fucking psychopath, too, because he sits on this billboard and tries to get cars into car accidents by turning both streetlights green, green at the same time. Yeah. Wait until they're, they're both coming. And, mm. yep. and he eventually does get someone in a car accident. He's got a crush on his old teacher. It's implied that he's... Some like mentally handicapped in yeah. some way. Well, she said she taught remedial reading. Right. So, so he can't read very well. Yeah. And he talks like he's not intelligent. Yeah. He does the, the stereotypical, Miss Miss Yeah. That's not good. I don't like it. No. The whole thing was weird. But, um, I mean, there's not a lot for me to say about this episode, really. They figure out it's him, and then they get him. Yeah, they put him in a prison? They put him in a, like a mental institution. Okay. But they give him a TV. That doesn't make any sense either. If, you, if you're if you jailing a lightning monster and you don't want him to be able to get out, why do you put any electronics at all? When they first come in there and they're, like, they're seeing him and it's a big padded room, I'm like, oh, okay, so they've got him in a room with no electronics around at all. That makes a lot of sense. But then there's a giant fucking TV in front of his face that he's switching you know, channels with his mind. Well, maybe they just wanted to give him something to focus his powers on. And what's weird is they they imply that his phosphorus or whatever in his, or potassium, his potassium and something else, some other kind of salt. His electrolytes. The electrolytes in his body are imbalanced. Right. And that maybe that imbalance, like just, he had just this weird natural imbalance, that that's why when he got hit by lightning, it gave him this ability. It doesn't make a lot of sense, but at least it's, trying to make sense. Yeah. And then at the end of the episode, they do the blood work and she's like, everything came back normal. So it's like, what the fuck? So maybe you're right. Maybe it is supernatural. Who knows? Maybe this is another one where they, where they're thinking about, um, going like exploring later where they're thinking about coming back to this because they talk about first, like the sheriff knows everything about lightning. Yeah, <laughs> because it's weird because they're in a town where there's scientists doing some sort of experiments with lightning. That's true. So maybe something happened with their experiments that got him. Right. And maybe they're going to want to study him. So they're going to take him out. Yeah, that's what so maybe maybe they'll come back to this at some point. I don't know. Hmm. Well, we'll have to keep watching and see what happens. It's a good show. I'm telling you, it's yeah. you know, it's on its third season and uh, it's, it's a solid show. Well, maybe for Christmas you can give me the first season uh, VHS tapes. Oh, God. <laughs> i got to buy you so many shows so that you can watch. I like TV. Wouldn't it be great if you could just watch whatever you wanted whenever you wanted to? Well, hello, everybody. It's Future Mark and Future Carol here. Hey, what's up? We're here to talk to you about an exciting sponsor for our show called My Bookie. Are I'm you fam- very excited. Are you familiar with My Bookie's work? No, not really. <laughs> so you're aware what a bookie is? Yes. We saw hidden gems. They're guys that sit inside vestibules and steam while you win a, fo- a basketball bet and then shoot you in the head afterwards. Okay, so spoilers I don't think we should for, be working with them then. Spoilers for inside gems or <laughs> hidden gems or uncut gems, right. whatever the hell it's called. Um, Adam Sandler piece of crap, yeah. Yeah. So, no, my bookie, though, they take the middleman, the guy that shoots you in the head, out of the equation. And instead, you just go to mybookie.ag and you say, hey, this basketball game's going on right now. I think that I will bet on it. And I'm going to place a safe and secure bet here at my bookie. And then when I win, I'll be able to cash out really easily. And that's all like legal and stuff now. Yes, absolutely. That's so cool. I didn't really realize that you know you could do that. Yep, the internet is an amazing thing, <laughs> and so is the winning season, which is returning to my bookie. You know what the winning season means, Carol? The winning season means I, I doubling don't. your first deposit. So all you have to do is go to mybookie.ag, use our promo code, which is Retro Fees. And they will match dollar for dollar up to $1,000 on your first deposit. Oh, wow. That's a good deal. You put $1,000 in. They say, here's $1,000 to go nuts with. Should we we do that? Yeah, let's put $1,000 in. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's just there, there's you know you're stuck in the house. You're not driving all the way to the casinos, which aren't open, or they are open, but they're not supposed to be open. Or, <laughs> or they're in your buddy's distance. basement right now. Do you want to avoid coronavirus? Sit in your house <laughs> and bet. Watch sports and go on my bookie dot. AG. AG. Yeah, that's right. That stands for always good. <laughs> Every play you want to make is waiting for you at my bookie. It is simple. Make your picks, win big, collect your cash. Well, that that does sound simple. Yep. I think you would need to talk to me quite a bit about all this different sports jargon first, but I'm all in. you need we'll to know it. is to use the promo code retro fees and double your first deposit. It's a no brainer. Yay. Back to 1995. It's so much better there. Yeah. yeah. Like, if you could just control it with your mind. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Play this. Poof. Well, you know, you can with, with VCRs, you can record whatever. You can yeah. program your VCR to record it certain times. But unless, you know, you study the TV guide, you don't know exactly when your shows are going to be on and you don't know if they're going to play like the How first else episode. would you know when a show is going to be on But besides reading the TV guide? But I'm saying like, I just want to be able to have it right now without having to like research when I can record it. I want, I want it now. Wow. I know. I'm greedy and stuff. But the fact that you want it now is why we started dating. So, right. Uh, <laughs> speaking of wanting it now, though, let's 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 transition into the movie <clears throat> because we saw a movie. I guess uh, we saw softcore porn. We saw a a moving pictures on film Breasts. played at twenty four uh, frames per second. Breasts on screen. That's what we saw. Yeah, lots and lots of breasts and an ass. Only one. Well, only one boy ass. Lots of girl asses, too. Some uh, also, like, not that they, like, you know, displayed the vagina or anything like that, but there's some bottomless stuff, too. Yeah. The whole thing. Okay, so we saw Showgirls. Uh, if you, any, For anyone that's ever wanted to see Jesse Spano naked. <laughs> this is your movie. Yeah, because she's naked a <clears throat> lot in this movie. It's not even a little bit. It's a lot. But... Uh, what did you think of the movie overall? <laughs> um, well, it was terrible. Mm-hmm. It was completely unrealistic. Mm-hmm. Um, it's good for seeing people naked. Sure. There's some dancing that's not great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, um, I, I, I don't know. It kind of just made me feel worse for being a person watching it (laughs) to me this movie is a dismal failure in writing directing acting choreography the only thing it would be good for is fine yeah would be like marking down exactly when the naked parts are and just fast forwarding getting on vhs and fast forwarding to those parts i guess but even a lot of those are not exactly like titillating you know what i mean right? like like the one like i think it was hotter watching her give a lap dance than watching her have sex oh yeah because that sex scene is ridiculous yes it was terrible she's like she's got her legs wrapped around this dude and like she's going to town on his belly button <laughs> like they they're not lined up properly at all no they're in a pool and she's flopping around like he's pulled a trout from the water. <laughs> it was really bad. I mean, like, that's an easier way to drown than it is to get <laughs> off, in my opinion. But yeah, that's not sexy at all. No. Like, not in any way. Not even close. Nope. No, but like, when she gave him the lap dance, yeah, it was, was kind of hot. Yeah, a little bit. And she was basically doing the exact same thing as when she gave him a lap dance, but underwater. I guess. Yeah. So not working out. No. Yeah. So anyway, uh, this movie is directed by Paul Verhoeven, and that just makes me sad. <laughs> the knowledge of that makes me sad because Paul Verhoeven directed RoboCop. Wow. And Total Recall. Two excellent, excellent movies. Well... But this is... I mean, was he asleep 
when this movie was being filmed? I don't understand. Maybe he didn't have enough blood in his brain when he was directing wow. it to do a good job. Maybe not. I don't. I, I. I. I can only speculate. Maybe he could only do so much with this terrible script. But why he agreed to do this movie at all? The director of this movie should be Alan Smithy. Who's that? That's a pseudonym that uh, directors use when they feel so shitty about their work <laughs> they don't want to put their names on it. Right. Well, like okay, the very beginning of the movie. She's hitchhiking, mm-hmm. and she gets picked up. By Elvis Presley. <laughs> right, basically. Like, hey, mama, get in here. And I'm heading to Viva Las Vegas. <laughs> she immediately pulls out a switchblade because he says you can sit a little closer if you want. Yeah, she's like, fuck you. <laughs> she's, Elizabeth Berkeley's character, Nomi, mm-hmm. is one of the most mentally and emotionally unstable characters <laughs> I've ever seen put to film. Yeah, she she was pretty fucking frightening. Yeah. And, um, you know, she's just really mean to him the whole time. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, like, he tries being nice to her and she, like, warms up to him Mm -hmm. and leaves all of her possessions in a suitcase in his car when they get to Vegas because he says his uncle can get her a job. Yeah, because his uncle is the host at the Riviera Casino. He gives her $10 to play slots and says, okay, I'm going to talk to my uncle. How did, I mean, how is she that, like, she goes from that paranoid that she's going to cut him for wanting to snuggle mm. to, sure, I trust you with all of my possessions, bye. And this is a woman that, as we learn later, grew, basically grew up on the streets. Yeah, her her dad killed her mom. Yeah, murder-suicide, the best form of suicide. Yeah. She ended Murder up suicide is the best one. In a foster home and then got kicked out and on the streets as a teenager. Mm. She ran away or whatever. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. And she started soliciting. She was a hooker. Yeah. Basically. And then she wanted to, but she always wanted to go to to be a dancer. In Vegas. And she has such a like a natural ability to dance, apparently. That's what everyone keeps saying. But she's not a good dancer. No. <laughs> Well, it's not that Elizabeth Berkeley's not a good dancer, but these the these dances, the choreography of this dance these dances are terrible. I mean, the way that she's moving in most of the dances, it's very herky jerky. Yeah. Very like harsh movements and mm-hmm. you know, I guess maybe it's how people do lap dances. I don't know, but it's certainly not how people dance. Well, it's in, not how you do lap dances. On stage. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do what a, lap dances. What a glowering look. I'm just talking about in the privacy of our own home. Don't talk about. And we don't have a home. I have a home. You have a home. We don't have a home. No, whatever. No. <clears throat> privacy of our own homes. I don't do lap dances. Okay. Okay. That's for the official record. <laughs> yes. whoever, the, whoever the official record keeper of this show is, Carol doesn't do lap dances. Right. I don't. Okay. Sure. Now, the other weird thing in the beginning of this movie that makes no fucking sense mm-hmm. is he, of course, has driven off with all of her things, right? Yeah. So she has he leaves. nothing. She starts beating the shit out of the car next to where he oh, parked. Oh. By the way, is there $10 worth of shit in, in that suitcase? Right? Yeah, he probably lost out on that deal. Like, she's just some transient. And he's like, oh, this suitcase has got to be worth more than 10 bucks. I don't know. But yeah, she beats the shit out of the car. And the girl who the car belongs to sees her and says, hey, that's my car. (laughs) Tries to stop her. She gets hit. Yeah. And instead of like killing her, calling the police, I I don't know anything. She's like, hey, come on, let me buy you a burger. (laughs) Tell me about your problems. Right. And then... She runs into the nicest person in right. Las Vegas somehow. Right. Then they're sitting there, they're having food. She's trying to ask questions to figure out what's going on with this girl. Mm-hmm. She's mad about the questions, because obviously she doesn't want to tell her, hey, I'm a hooker. Mm-hmm. And she's throwing the food she's bought her, yeah. hitting the table, throwing carrying fries, on, yeah. like having a temper tantrum. And the girl's like, hey, why don't you just come stay with me for a while? What? Yeah. The... the the progression of events makes no sense at all. Like, she is a highly unpleasant person. That's the biggest problem with this movie, is that our protagonist, Nomi, 
is one of the most unlikable people in the whole film. She's as unlikable as the villains in yeah. the movie. But yet people keep bending over backwards to try to like help her and mm-hmm. give her opportunities. Right. Why? And she's supposed to be this fantastic dancer, but she's only okay. You're right. I don't I don't get it at all. I think the the most sympathetic character in the movie is the guy that was on LA Law, the one wearing the uh the horrible toupee. The guy that's like their the core, the, the head of the dance thing basically. Not the guy she has sex with, but the other guy, the guy that's like, "You may have heard I'm a prick. I am a prick." You know? Is he the one that tried to uh get her to hook for $1000 or whatever? No. Okay. No, he's the one that wanted her to take the ice cubes and put them on her nipples. Yeah, yeah. like she's auditioning. Her nipples are supposed to be hard, I and guess, they're cause not. Because that's, that's, you it's know. It's a topless show. They want hard nipples. So <laughs> so weird, but he okay. He gives her ice, and that's like where she draws a line. You can look at my boobs, but I'm not going to rub ice on my tits. Is that? Now, <laughs> I guess I shouldn't be asking you this, but guys out there. Is that, like, are hard nipples more attractive than soft nipples? I would assume that they are because that's something that happens with arousal and, you know, right. they don't want to think that the girl's not See, I, I like aroused. Bo- I like both. Soft nipples, hard nipples. It don't care if I'm into it. It doesn't, doesn't matter to me. <laughs> just as long as there are nipples. I'm not talking about you. Oh, whose nipples are you talking about? I'm talking about if you're watching, you know, like if you're if you're going to like um, the Spice Channel or whatever on uh, on cable and trying to watch this scrambled, you know, like uh, the swirl of the Picasso. Can you really the, tell? The Picasso porn that's on, uh, that's on there where it's like you're trying to, you know, you're giving yourself a headache trying to see that. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about if or, or or you know Playboy magazine or a Hustler magazine. That's what I'm saying. Okay. I'm saying it doesn't matter to me if they're hard or not. That's all. I don't know. They wanted her nipples hard. Yeah. But but I think he's the most uh he's the most sympathetic character. <laughs> because he doesn't get his way a lot of times. He's like, "No, she shouldn't be the lead cuz she's not a good enough dancer." And they're like, ah, well, I want to fuck her, so so we're going to make her the lead dancer. <laughs> right. And what, yeah, why everyone, like, Elizabeth Berkeley's a fine looking woman, I guess, but why everybody's like, it's, you know, this is the one, it's her, you know, and stuff. And they throw a lot of names around, too. Oh, my God. The people that, that are putting on this show, they're like, we could have gotten Latoya Jackson or Janet Jackson or Paula Abdul. Mm-hmm. Or, and it's like, no, you couldn't for a topless show. You think you're getting Janet fucking Jackson for a topless show in Las Vegas? What are you paying her forty five million dollars a year? <laughs> right. What are you thinking? There is no way. And I'm like, but instead we got Crystal Connors or whatever her name is. This, because she's the best. This person you've never she's heard so of. So sexy. Who is she supposed to be? I he, he mentioned Suzanne Summers. Like, Suzanne Summers is going to leave step by step to do a fucking topless show yeah, in Las Vegas. That's ridiculous. Yeah. The whole, they're trying to make it like, hey, this is a big time thing. Big time actresses and, and musicians and singers and, and dancers don't do topless shows in Las Vegas. Right. But even before she gets there, she starts out at a actual strip club. Yeah, sorry. Cheetah. Cheetahs. And she gets herself a stalker. Oh, oh. yes. This black dude, she goes to a club and she uh, she's dancing with her friend and this guy's a bouncer at the club and he's like, I'm going to dance with this girl because I just got to dance Somebody with her. Somebody said to him, hey, she's a good dancer and he's like, she thinks she is. Right. Which I agree with. I thought we were going to go through and this was going to be, by the way, the guy that wrote this wrote Flash Dance. <laughs> Which is, I always thought was a good movie. Now right. I'm starting to think, maybe that movie sucks. Because <laughs> so, it's been, you know, I mean, that movie came out like, what, in 83, I think? Yeah, I don't know. A long that movie time came ago. out like 12 years ago. So I don't, uh, I haven't watched it in a while. Maybe it's not good. Maybe. But, but yeah, I thought what was going to happen was he's going to be like, okay, I'm going to take you under my wing. I'm a, like a Juilliard trained dancer or something like that. I see your potential. I'm going to take you under my wing. I'm going to show you how to dance. We're going to go for the big, you know, burlesque show or whatever the fuck you want to do. You know, like that, like that would be the, 
you know, the big thing that she wants to get at the end of the movie, and then they would have like some sort of romance. That's where I thought the movie was going to go. That would have been a better story. But no, it doesn't go there. Instead, nope. he's like, everybody got AIDS and shit. And like, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what the fuck that means. And then uh, he's like, dancing's not fucking. He's got like, this character basically has like 17 lines that, he's, that he just repeats throughout the entire movie. And. Like, his character is nothing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The whole movie could have happened without him. For sure. For, yeah, absolutely. And it should have, because it was too fucking long. Oh, yeah. This movie lasted an eternity. And it, it the movie goes in so many different directions. Like, you think the movie's going to be one thing. Like I said, with the, the whole, like, I'm going to take you in the right wing. And then you think the movie's going to be like, oh, you know, uh, she's um, struggling and... and this uh, this Gina Gershon is evil and is going to like everyone's going to hate her and stuff like no, that. She ends up being the villain. Our yes. protagonist is the villain. Yeah, for sure. I agree. She took a she took someone who's uh, you know sacrificed their whole life for the shit and uh, you know destroys her career basically. Yeah, who who started out well? Yes, obviously wanting to fuck her, also seeming to want to help her. Yeah, she's the whole reason she even has a chance to be in this thing I don't, that she wants to be in. I never understood the dynamic. I know you didn't either. I no. Mean, this, it makes no sense. Basically, like that, the star of this burlesque show that she wants to be in, mm-hmm. who her, her friend who she's living with for inexplicable reasons, mm-hmm. um, brings her backstage and she gets to meet, likes her. She she wants to have her in the show. Mm-hmm. She she takes her boyfriend or like not the boyfriend, the head of the show, whatever. Yeah, but he's kind of a boyfriend. Yeah. They're like they've got something going on. She takes him to the strip club to meet her and see her. Buys and he buys a lap dance or she mm-hmm. buys it? I don't even she know. Buys, she buys she, a lap dance for him. She pays five hundred dollars for a lap dance yeah. from this woman and sits and watches while he gets a lap dance. And, and is obviously turned on by it. Yeah, she she then, like, gets her an audition. Mm-hmm. And even though she blows the audition, because, again, she's a volatile person who can't hold her temper. <laughs> yeah, she's just like, he's like, you know, uh, you want to, um, you know, it's with the ice and everything. And she fucking, like, throws it in his face and storms off. Yeah, she still gets it because of this lady. Mm-hmm. And the lady takes her out to lunch, tries to be her friend, tries to help her dance. The guy, she wants to fuck her. Mm-hmm. Um. She ends up getting shoved down the stairs. Yeah. What the fuck? Well, I mean, other stuff happens. So, like, she co- she comes part of the show, and then there's an opening for her understudy. For the oh, stars yeah, that's why she shoves her down the stairs. And he, she ends up going out and fucking the guy that runs the show. Who is this girl's boyfriend, the, the main character, yeah. star? I mean. I mean, it seems like they have an open kind of thing going yeah. or whatever. And um, so then... He says, hey, it's yours, you know, and then apparently Crystal doesn't want it to be hers. So she says, no, you can't be the understudy. And then she shoves her down the stairs. Why do you think that was? I think she was she's she was jealous, I guess, and and sort of fearful. She does say that there's always somebody younger and hungrier, you know, coming for you. So I think maybe she's fearful of that. I don't know, I guess. I mean, honestly, with this character, though, I think she would have gotten pushed down the stairs either way. Either. Well, yeah, because Naomi's just like, I mean, she could have she could have been the nicest person in the world to her. And Elizabeth Berkeley would have just pushed her down the stairs anyway. Yeah. Well, and because, like, had she gotten the understudy role, mm-hmm. she would have wanted to be her. Right. She didn't get the understudy role and she was mad. And guess what? Then she still got to be her because they still gave it to her. Yeah, they're like, well, let's we can't go dark because the stardust has never gone dark since 1958 or whenever we opened. And it's like, because it's a real casino. And they're like, well, you know, we'll just we'll take a chance on this one, basically. But who else were the options? Like, and there were other girls who auditioned. Here's the thing, too. They make it they make it seem like this is a big like attraction for Vegas, which I don't believe at all. But that a burlesque show is going to be a big attraction for any, you know, like people might come see it. It might make some money, but it's not going to be like we're going to Las Vegas to see this burlesque show. No Mm -hmm. one's doing that. Um, But they make it seem like this is some some, like big thing where they could get Janet Jackson or whatever. Right. And that Crystal Connors is this big star. They got her. 
they, that's the one they wanted. They got her. They brought her in. That she was this big star, right? She didn't come up from the ranks. She was already an established star mm-hmm. in whatever field when she came into this. How are they going to sell a show where it's like it's you know this is a nobody now? You need a star to bring anybody in. Hmm. Who's going to be like, oh well, let me see this person I've never heard of dance. Yeah, you know, like she's not a star. That's true. And this is not a vehicle where you make a star. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe as an understudy or as a, you know, like a side piece to the, the you know, everything that's going on, people could say, oh, she's a really good dancer. And then her name could get known and she could organically become a star. She could do some other things. You know, she could whatever. However, people showcase dancing or topless dancing or whatever. <laughs> she could, you know, go down that route and become a star, but that's not what they that's not how they build this. They build this as the show was big because they got this crystal person who was a star on par with Suzanne Summers. Hmm. Which makes no sense to me. But good points, good points. But anyway, so yeah, she they make her the star of the show. And then to celebrate. <laughs> yep. They have a party for her. Right. With this this singer that they've been talking about for most of the movie that's like they got a crush on her or whatever. Yeah, he looks kind of like Yanni. Sure. Yeah. Acts kind of like Yanni, too, from what I hear. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I don't know anything about Yanni. I, what, are you mean Yanni or Kenny G or both? I mean Yanni. All right. He looks like Yanni. Okay. Long hair. Yep. And uh, similar face. Okay. Okay. So, anyways. Big party. Big party. Her her friend who she lives with, who's a really good, nice person. A t- huge crush on Yanni. Yeah, huge crush on him. And even though she was mad at Elizabeth Berkeley because she knows she pushed Crystal Connors down the stairs. Right, yeah. She decides to forgive her so she can meet this guy. Mm-hmm. So she goes to the party, meets the guy. He takes her to his room mm-hmm. and gang rapes her. With his two, like... His, bodyguards? Yeah, bodyguards or whatever. And it's so, like, it comes out of nowhere. Like, the movie is stupid and kind of silly, very cheesy, horrible dialogue. But it, And it's like there's, you know, a veneer of, I guess, like, sleaziness to it. Right. But it's not brutal and it's it's a horrible tonal shift it's like and and what's worse is for some reason either the script or paul verhoven decides that they're going to juxtapose these two things because we see you know what's going on at the party and then we see this rape scene lasts for a while and it's very like graphic and and, visceral and it's like it's like another movie is going on in that scene and then we go back to this stupid silly you know, uh, striptease or, you know, whatever it's called. Uh, yeah. no. What is it called? Showgirls. Showgirls movie. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was really disturbing to watch. And like, like you said, they're flashing back and forth. So you're seeing the one girl having fun at this party and the other girl getting raped. All right. So I'm getting punched and like fucking kicked. Just like brutal. Right. And the idea, I know that there are guys that are famous that are probably assholes and probably have raped people before you don't you don't like to think about it but i'm sure it happens we don't hear about it i'm sure it happens but the idea that this guy could on a regular basis beat the fuck out of somebody gang rape her with his bodyguards because it's not like he had to tell him what to do yeah it's like they knew what was going on they do it's just a thing they do right so it's like the idea that he could do this to multiple women and still, and no one come forward, no one find out about it, or whatever. The one guy at some point, like, so they do this, they rape, do you, I'm sorry, do you want to say anything else about this? About the brutal nature of this? No, it's okay. But so they, she says, you know, they go to the hospital, because she, she finds her friend, they go to the hospital, and Elizabeth Berkeley's like, where are the police? And he's like, they're not coming. You know, the guy that's running the show. Mm-hmm. He's like, yeah, he's not at our casino this year, but he might be next year. You know, he's part of the family. We, we we protect our family. The police aren't coming, basically, is what he's saying. And she's like, what about her? And she's like, we'll give her enough money where she can open her own dress shop or whatever. Because she's a, she's a seamstress. Yeah, and it's like the idea that he's like, oh, this is how we deal with it. We'll just pay her off. That might work with some people. 
some people might be like, it's not worth the pain and the embarrassment and, and whatever, you know, and I can get whatever out of it. I'll take this as a silver lining. But they're still, of course, emotionally and, and physically destroyed for the rest of their lives, probably. Right. Um, but that might work for some people where they wouldn't come forward. But it, that ain't working with everybody. You know, peace, the, the, that's, somebody's going to be like, fuck you and your money. And they're coming forward. And that would embolden other people to come forward. I just don't believe this. Eventually, but I mean, how many women without getting paid off don't come forward? So why why do you think that? I guess that's true. You know, somebody's going to go, and this is a big star who's going to have money for for lawyers that they can't afford yeah. and everything else. I mean, honestly, I don't know what I would do in that situation. I might take the money too. Yeah, I guess that's true. But anyway, he's like, so we're just going to pay her off, and and like you know whatever, and this is just how it is. So she he he was hitting on Elizabeth Berkeley, right? Earlier. So she calls him up and is like, you know, yeah, you know, like I want to have sex or whatever. And he, he, she comes in, uh, the bodyguards are outside, you know, but they stay outside this time. And he thinks he's just going to have some fun with this. Yeah, he's not going to rape her. He's going to have some consensual sex. Right. So what she does is beats the fuck out of him. She's got her knife and she like, uh, you know, she kicks him and like just, just fucking destroys him. Mm-hmm. And then leaves and says to the bodyguards, he wants to be. <laughs> he's sleeping <laughs> right like oh you wore him out huh yeah. but it's like they don't ever get theirs i that's i'd like you know i i get it i would rather see the guy brought to justice so he can't ever do this to other women again mm-hmm. but i i get why the movie has to do this yeah and like like i said i mean i think she would have beaten the fuck out of the other two if she knew but i don't think anybody knows exactly what happened and so she goes and tells her friend what happened yeah like, her friend even knows. Like, her and, and, friend is still fucking out of it, which is right. just sad. And that's the last time we see her, too, by the way. Yeah. And then even, there's a big billboard with her face on it so, to show right. that she's, she's a in this star big star. Now, apparently. And she leaves. Yeah. She just, she, she got everything that she wanted, but I guess it wasn't worth her soul. I don't, I don't know what the, I don't know what the message of the movie is supposed to be, but she hitchhikes and gets picked up by the same, same fucking asshole. guy. Yeah. And says, I want my suitcase back. And he's like, yeah, yeah, whatever, you know, and like, and they're going to Los Angeles. So I don't know if she's going to Los Angeles to be like a legitimate star or what, if she's going to star in Saved by the Bell. <laughs> um, I don't know if she, you know, she does cocaine at one point in the movie, just casually mm-hmm. does a little snort of cocaine, even though she's been saying no to cocaine the entire time. I would have paid all the money in the world if she had done that that shot of cocaine and then been like, I'm so excited. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I just, I mean, I, I have nothing. I don't understand. It's like, ugh. it's a train wreck. It's a train wreck with boobs. Yep. A lot of nudity. A lot of nudity in this movie. Everyone's got their, their, their tits out in this movie. It's no good. But, uh, no, it's not a good movie. It's, uh, it's, it can't, you can't even enjoy it on that level, really, I don't think. Because of all the bad and the dark mm-hmm. and the, yeah. Yeah. I don't even think it can be enjoyed that way. Yeah. What's funny and interesting about this is they filmed part of this on location in Las Vegas at the Stardust okay. Casino. Okay. They filmed Saved by the Bell Wedding in Vegas at the Stardust Casino. Oh, really? Yes. And I wonder if they were filming around the same time. Maybe. She's Elizabeth Berkeley's in that, but only at the very end. Yeah. So it's weird because she was, I, I would assume, because she was filming this movie. But it's like they were right by each other. Not that she could have done both necessarily, but maybe it was easy for her to just like pop over yeah. for like that one scene that she's in. That's funny. Yeah. But yeah, uh, Wedding in Vegas is a better movie than this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is really sad because it's not good. Don't waste your time. Oh, don't. Yeah, you don't. It's need so to do this. long. It is so long. Just watch some softcore porn. Mm-hmm. Go, go rent some porn. Whatever. You yeah. don't, it, Elizabeth Berkeley is pretty, but not worth this. Go to the mature section of the video store. and Behind the curtain. Right. And, and you know, and if you can't do that, if you're under 18, then go Pay to the woods. Friend. Go to the woods and find some pornography there because there's always pornography in the woods. But I don't know. I, I, like, it's not, 
is it worth renting it? Is it worth even renting it if you want to masturbate or whatever? Well, here's the thing. If you're going to rent something to masturbate to, you could rent this and fast forward to the good parts. <laughs> or good parts is in quotation marks. You could just rent some porn. Yeah. I'd rent some porn. Yeah. I agree. And if you want a movie with good dancing, this is not it. <laughs> yeah. So. If you want a good movie with good dancing, uh, rent Footloose. Right? There you go. Yeah, this isn't, uh, this is not great. Don't do it, guys. Just don't do it. No. But that, uh, that's the episode for the, the week. So, you know, tell your friends and, uh. Do that. And uh, share the tapes and um, go to RetroLateFee.com or write us at LateFee1994 at AWOL.com. All right. Sounds good. We will talk to you next week. Bye. Bye.